What's up YouTube? I'm Vaughn and this is the Gear Channel where we discuss collectibles, hobbies, gabay games from tabletop to video games and today we are reviewing something that many of you have asked me to review and that is my COD deck profile which is perfect timing because last night we got first place with it. So make sure to like and subscribe because it really helps the channel a lot and I do really appreciate it. So with that out of the way, let's get started. So starting with the hand trap, we have one Kel back because besides returning your opponent's monster to the hand and getting free level 4 spells to summon, it's quite good as an extender, especially milling the top 5 cards of our deck. Now for other interruptions for starting first, we do have one called by the grave and one instant fusion which actually acts almost like another call by the grave because we could special summon a Millennium Eyes restrict for free and also we could spam Millennium Eyes multiple times since we do have a majority of cards that could special summon dark monsters for free now for the quantities starting with the highest to the lowest we have three rocket tracers three star lease which is incredible and you could do quite a bit of combo so this is why you always want to see either in your hand or in your graveyard because you could extend quite well and also it's really good for follow-up plays as well then we have three kage to kages this card is incredible as well especially since we have shadow light so we could actually spam kage to kage multiple times because we're getting additional normal summons so i was actually able to summon this guy twice using his effect by having two of it in hand and he's just a really good extender another good extender is nocto vision dragon really good have to play at three you get that plus one also the free special summit is quite good as well now going with the twos we do have two nayas yeah i did cut down on the adotic quantities because uh i find naya at three was too much and realistic i would love to play them at one each but the only issue with that is that we don't really have that much odotic so then resolving zora's effect might be a bit of an issue especially if we ran out of odotics to actually use to add then same thing applies towards onunu then we have two reptilian cults which is a free level four tuner be able to special summon multiple times with its own effect or with other effects we have two rocket recharges because we do spam this quite a lot and we do use his an effect to spell summon dark monsters for free then we have two chaos creators which allows us to extend but also allows us to use the omega ability multiple times so we can actually hand loop quite a bit with just omega alone because of chaos creator now for the singles, we have one Zora, one Flow Ghost. Zora is mandatory because that is our main combo for hand looping and extending. We have one Lamia, which is okay, debating of switching uh, it out. But at the moment, it was pretty good. When it's summoned, you add a level 8 and it's a dark, so it's good for a shadow light as well. We do have one Night Sword Serpent, which for some reason loves staying in my hand. We have one Chaos Valkyrie, which is a good extender. And also, if it gets banished, you could actually... Foolish, a light or dark monster, which is good for follow-up plays. Then we have one black dragon, one white dragon, and a rocket caliber. We have abs dragon, which is really good, especially if we choose to send it to graveyard with Starlees to get a Nocto. That could actually make us plus quite a bit. Now for our big guys, we have one darkest diabolus, which is good for hand looping. And a good follow-up is actually Chaos Lavinier, which actually shuffles the card from the hand back into the deck so wherever they place on top or bottom of the deck is now going to be shuffled we have theory on imprints which i started to do a lot more cool plays with imprints because you could actually target your zora put in the spell and trap card zone and then if it's sent to the graveyard you could trigger zora because zora doesn't matter which zone it's in as long as it's on the field sent to the graveyard so you could trigger it, its effect so it could actually minus quite a bit of using cost wise with your tribute so when you usually have to do a whole loop to into that specific play now you could actually cut it down with imprints then we have one curse one queen one king and finally one overlord now for our spells we have three snake rings which isn't too mandatory to actually play it at three but for this specific build why not 60 cards it would do then we have three quick launch which is amazing because you can spam this monster both times and it's not once but turn so getting three rocket monsters on your board is always nice we have three chaos spaces two shadow light which i'm really debating on bringing a third one because this card is just incredible now for singles we have one boot sector launch one dragon ravine one odo dex open strike one water lily yes so i rather play two different 
spells which I could add if I draw into one of them. At least I could add the other. I don't really need another Water Lily for follow-up plays because majority of the time when we're doing our combos and our grave is already filled, we already have so many different types of extenders, so it's not really too necessary to play two. We have a Foolish Burial, which is good. And now for a new thing that we're trying out that's been working is Reasoning, because since we have quite a bit of spell cards that have trigger effects in a graveyard, well not trigger effects, but tr effects in a graveyard, and if your opponent even calls the monster level right, it still acts as a free Foolish Burial, which is quite good. Then we have a Monster Reborn, and for our last trap, we have is our Phantom Knight, which is just a free level 4 monster. Now for the extra deck. Starting with for one Fusion Monster, Million Eyes Restrict. Now for Lynx, we have a Striker Dragon, we have a Pitsy, we have a Rom, a Heroic Seal, a Dark Charmer, which is very good to spell summoning one of our opponent's monsters and triggering Odotic Queen's effect. We have a Saruja, which we're starting to use like less of because we're finding other alternatives to combo off, but it's definitely an amazing monster to actually have and to extend with. We do have two King of the Pharaoh Imps, which I wish we had more room to play three of, but sadly we don't. We have one Babuska, which is incredible if we get Dimension Shifted or Drawn Lockbird. We have a Zombie Vampire, which a lot of people don't realize is that if you have a monster that is originally owned by your opponent, like let's say with the effect of Dark Charmer, you could treat that monster as a level A, which is pretty free. And also if we trigger the effect and spell summon an additional monster from our opponent's graveyard, we could also trigger although the Queen's effect. We do have one Lance a lot, which a lot of people ask, why are we playing Lance? Well, it's two level eight monsters to make it. So any attributes, which is quite good, but most importantly, it's a dark and we do have some restrictions of only spell summoning darks from the extra deck. And finally, we have an AA Zeus, which is quite good to overlay over a Babuska. Next for synchros, we have Omega because we could spam this multiple times. And finally, we have a Borlord Savage Dragon. Now for the side. Starting with the spells, we have three Dark Rulers No More, three we. Gekis, because these are our board breakers, including one Harpy Spell Duster. Now for the monsters, we do have three Bald Drakes. Now, there is an issue with the Beastiles numbers that I'm playing right now, and the consistency definitely has to change by waiting for the Mega Tin. But Bald Drake at three is actually correct, since we do have multiple monsters that could be spell summoned, like a Noctal version. So that means Bald Drake could actually be two interruptions on turn zero. We have one Magnumat, which I would actually like a second one. We have one Jurusworm and one Saranir. Now for the Synchros, we do have one Bone de Fleur for siding with the Beast Tales, and finally a Scarlight Red Dragon for time. And that's it for our deck profile. Now, if you guys enjoyed today's video, you know what to do. Like and subscribe. And friendly reminder, as always, that we have our YouTube membership and also our OnlyFans that contains additional content. So if you guys want early access for deck profiles, definitely visit those pages. And if you want a sneak peek of future products we're planning to review here on the channel, you can follow me on my Instagram, Vaughn Gear. I'm Vaughn, and this was the Gear Channel.